Yo. Hey everybody, it's Teacher Tuesday, Teacher Tuesday. All right, so we're gonna be starting a video, basically series, a two-part series. We're gonna do an entire outfit in two different videos. So today we're gonna be showing you the top, and it's the Dolman tee from Lowland Kids. And next week I'm gonna show you the pants that we pair with this tee for the super cute outfit. It's totally unisex depending on the fabrics that you choose. And um, are you in for a treat today? because you can choose Recaptured Values fabric because Recaptured Values is selling fabric now. And this is the cute little tee that you're gonna learn how to do today, Dolman tee. I do do, of course, my modifications, so make sure you pay attention to that. Um, but that's super cute. So that's the tee you're gonna learn how to do today, so stay tuned for that. I'll do a timestamp if you wanna skip past me talking, but you don't wanna miss this fabric, so. All right, this is Coco, which is also what color this is done in. It's a beautiful tan tie-dyed rib knit. It's the yummy rib knit. It's just beautiful. It's lovely. Um, and so, like, you can see the variations in it. It's got a whole bunch of different variations in it. But you can buy this on our website right now. Right now. You can buy it on our website right now. As you're watching this video, go ahead and buy it. It's, it's, on, it's on our website. Okay. Which will be linked below, of course. Recapturedvalues.com, just in case you forget. All right. And then we also have Plum, which is this beautiful, like, purpley it's beautiful again unisex can be used for boy or girl we actually made outfits for um sire in newborn size because he's due in april may ish hopefully april <laughs> we're at 34 weeks oh big bertha okay and then we got um and then i made one for my daughter too and i just added a bow to make it a little bit more girly but they're super unisex super comfy um so these are the two we have currently the cocoa and the plum and um so you can grab those and then we are going to offer up here soon this navy navy and hopefully olive we're trying to secure that but for sure navy um so yeah run on over to recapture values grab your fabric and um, we ship it in three to five business days unless it's a pre-order which we don't have any pre-orders available currently so if you grab fabric from our website it's shipping in three to five business days stay tuned to learn how to make this adorable top and then always 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 subscribe hit the notification bell because next tuesday we're going to be dropping the pants to make this a perfect set all right recapture values fabric rib knit cocoa tie-dye here shown super sweet super comfy Grab it. Just just buy it. Just do it. <laughs> All right. So we're doing the Dolman tee from Lowland Kids. And this is the front. And we are doing the curved hem bottom here. I'm not doing the facing. This is the cuff. Um, this is how it looks originally. But I do like to fold it in half um, across that fold line there. I, I just like the way it looks as far as the cuffs. It's a little bit um, not as wide. And then the neckband, I also do the same thing. It comes a little bit thicker than this but I cut it at one and a half inches as most typical neck bands are cut um, so make sure you um, thin that neck band if you want your neck band to look like mine and then here's the pieces cut out the front cut on a fold back cut on a fold and then neck band cut on a fold and then your two cuffs cut on folds okay, so we're just going to jump right in here you're going to make this right sides together. And of course, if you saw at the beginning, this is our rib knit fabric that we are selling. So you can grab this in our shop, recapturedvalues.com. Make sure you grab that. We're gonna put these right sides together. So this one's right side facing up. I'm gonna put this right side facing down. And basically, you put the front with the back and you're gonna sew up the shoulder seams and then the side seam here with this curve. We're gonna sew that or serge that depending on what you have. If you, have, if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine um, or just a stretch stitch, whatever your favorite stretch, dis stretch stitch is. Okay, and then our neck band, we're gonna do like a typical cuff. It is cut on the fold this way, so fold it right sides together here. 
and then you're gonna fold it right sides together here and that is the ham hot method so we fold it like a hamburger and then we're folding it like a hot dog here and you will sew or serge that raw edge of that armband same thing with these cuffs and if you missed it um, the armband cuff looks like this from the original pattern I just this fold line here I fold it in half on the fold line because I find the cuff to be a little bit bulky for my liking so um you can choose to do that or you don't have to do that it's, it's totally up to you that's just my preference so then same thing here these are cut on the fold hamburger this way fold it right sides together hot dog this way fold it right sides together same thing with this one and then we're going to go over to the serger and I'm going to use my cover stitch to him when I'm done but if you don't have a cover stitch you can use a sewing machine and that's perfectly fine or you So let's go over here to the serger to finish this really quick top up. All right, so I'm at my serger. Um, so let's go ahead and get these cuffs done. And I am making this for our soon to be newborn son. Hopefully he arrives sooner than later. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting this in um, the folded edge first. And I typically just do a quarter edge or a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not exactly sure what the pattern says, but that's just what I do. And this is a very oversized um, shirt, so I definitely don't recommend sizing up. Um, it's already baggy enough. All right, let's make sure. So I did both. I did an armband, and that was the neck band, and then I'm gonna do the last armband here. gonna snip these don't cut them too short and then here I'm gonna go ahead and snip right here and right here if you need more than those snips on the cuffs absolutely quarter um, I'm just gonna use two points of reference I do quarter my neck band though so this is the seam we just sewed I'm gonna go ahead and make my two points here before I fold this out and I'll show you what I mean by quartering, just in case you're new here. Quartering, quartering is what gets your neck band and cuffs um, to be perfect so that you're doing adequate stretching all the way around so that you don't have any fabric left over. So I matched up that point that we did here to the back seam. I'm gonna snip here, pull it all over, and make sure you're catching both um, sides of the fabric here. And so we'll make sure this is even here so when I snip, I'm catching both sides. And I'm literally just making a teeny snip, just enough that I notice that I made a snip there. Okay, so the neck band is quartered. And then lastly, the last armband here. And like I said, I'm just gonna do two points. So I'm gonna use the seam as one point and my little snips as one point. So then you're gonna flip these right side out like this. Make sure your raw edges are matching up here. So you get your cuff like that. The same thing with this one, which I've already snipped. I just hadn't flipped out yet. So I'm going to do that really fast. All right, so our cuffs are done. Two cuffs and a neck band. And we've got this right sides together. I'm going to go ahead and do the shoulder seams here first. Um, I mentioned earlier in the video that the hemming of this I don't you there's a facing that you can use to do the curved hem on the bottom of this or you can do the banded version which you cut straight across I actually like this without the facing and just hemming the bottom um, with the serger or with the I mean with the cover stitch just hemming the bottom with the cover stitch so then I'm going to take the armpit here make sure that I go underneath here and then I just follow that curve around. So you get that curve. Then you're just gonna make sure that your bottom points are matching up. All right, and then we have one more side seam here. I'm gonna start with the bottom here on this side, just because it's more simple. 
just follow that arm right Alright, cut those, cut those. Alright, and then we're going to quarter up our neck hole here. So what I do is I match my shoulder point to my shoulder point, and then you get your front and your back. So just make a tiny snip in the front and the back. And then because the scoop in the front is lower than the back, you're going to have to make sure you get equal side points because they're not going to be the shoulder seam because the, the scoop of the front is lower. So you're going to do that. Match up your front and your back points here. Mine kind of wiggled a little bit. Match those up and pull this over and you'll see that it actually ends up being about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half in front of that shoulder seam. So that's important. Um, when you're quartering because if you just chose to use the side seams the shoulder seams as your points it you would have had a little extra of the neck band where you didn't need it okay so then I'm gonna grab four pair I'm gonna grab three pins you can use four if you need to I like to leave the the third one the one that I'm gonna or the sorry I like to leave the fourth one the one that I'm going to actually put underneath the sewing machine off because I take it off anyway before I start sewing Okay, so I'm going to start in the back. The garment is still wrong side out. I'm going to start in the back here. I'm going to grab my neck band and I'm going to take this back seam here and I'm going to put it in the back. So I'm going to open up my neck band here like this and I'm going to put it inside the neck hole and I'm going to match up the neck hole point of the back with the seam of the back of the neck band. And I'm just going to put a pin here and then I'm just going to take another pin and go around to the side point here. So it's the next point on the neck band, which is in, still inside the garment. So that point is going to match up to this point here. And again, you're just making sure all three raw edges, the two raw edges of the neck band and the one raw edge of the neck hole are lined up. So now I'm in the front here. I'm making, we're just moving on to the next point, matching it up and pinning it. And then this is what I meant by the fourth point. I don't put a pin because I'm going to stick it right underneath the um, sewing machine. So I'm going to match it up to that point right there. And then that's when I just go ahead and put it underneath and get it going. For the neck bands, I don't cut that much off. I found that if I barely cut anything off and put this right up against the knife, the neck bands look the best. Okay, and so what quartering does, if you're not familiar with um, this channel or you, you're, I don't know, maybe haven't paid attention to the other videos, don't, it, no shame. Um, what quartering does is it allows you, because the, the neck band is slightly smaller than the opening, it's just the nature of bands. They're like 80 to 85% um, smaller than the opening. And so what you're going to do is, when you quarter, it allows you to pull that neck band to lay flat with the actual neck hole. Um, you don't want to overstretch the actual um, garment. You want to stretch the band so that both of these, air, the two edges of the band and the one edge of the hole are laying flat. So, and this is the back seam. This is where I would typically add a tag. I would just um, grab my little fold tag like this, fold it in half and put it right here in the seam and fold over it. But this is for my son and I'm not going to use a tag for this. Um, so, I'm just going to keep going around, grab the next pin and pull it tight. Um, again, don't, don't pull the, the neck hole, you want to pull the neck band to where it's laying flat. And every time you get to a pin, make sure you remove it. Alright, and then just make sure every time you move anything that you're making sure you're still matching up. our last pin we're moving on to the spot that we started and what I like to do is just overlap um, and try not to cut your original seam here that you've that you've already sewn don't cut that you want to cut your tail off but don't cut into your original seam so if you can't do that it takes some practice um, so I suggest you turn your blade off your knife down here if you're using a brother 1034 D um, the knife switch is over here. I think in the DX it's on the inside. I can't remember exactly where it is. I had one for a little while. Okay, so we're just gonna go over it. When you start to overlap, that's when you would turn this off. I've just kind of mastered it from doing it for a long time. Um, just trying not to make sure that, or trying to make sure that the 
knife right here does not cut into my original seam. And then you pull it out and I am going to use, let's see here, wherever it went. Um, my knit picker here, this, oh, this is the one I like. Okay, this is the knit picker. Um, you can get it on Waywalk. You pull this little latch open here, this little latch, pull it open. You're gonna start back here from like about an inch from the fabric from where you overlapped. Go in between the seam here and pop it out right by where the tail is. Then you're gonna open or kind of close that latch a little bit, wrap your tail around that hook on the end, close your latch and pull it through and that secures your tail and then you just cut off the extra. And I've said it before, this is the absolute best way to secure your tail. I've done it multiple ways and that is the most simple way to do it. And so our neckband, that's how it looks like this. Um, and of course I did um, shorten the neckband. I feel like the neckband of the original pattern is just a little too thick for my liking. Um, so I did make it one and a half inches, which is the typical for a neckband. Um, which I showed earlier in the video. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the arm cuffs here. Same thing, basically, as the neck band, we're just doing it on the armhole, okay? So what I like to do is put my seam on the armpit. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here, and I'm just gonna put it inside the armhole, like this. And this one will be a little bit more tricky, especially depending on what type of fabric you're using because you're kind of going, um, the stretch is gonna be a little different. So I'm just matching up that point to my shoulder seam here. And then I'm gonna go over here and match up the seam of my cuff to the armpit seam here. And that's what I'm gonna put underneath my serger here. Again, I've learned not to cut too much off. And the goal of this is exactly like the neck band. Don't stretch too much. You're just stretching just enough so that everything's laying flat and lining up. Um, let me see if I can get you guys a little bit closer here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay. And then you're just going to go around in a circle. Take your pin out as you go. And I'm just using one pin here. This is the newborn size, so one pin is fine for me. But no shame if you have to use more than one. I used to have to. Again, you're gonna overlap where you started, taking care not to cut into the original seam. Grab your knit picker, sandwich it in the seam, pop it out. Then you're gonna kinda close the lever, wrap that tail around that hook, close the lever all the way and pull it through and cut the excess off. All right, so then when you pop that cuff out, that's what it looks like right there. We're gonna do the other side really fast, exact same way. Yo. So, we could stop here if you wanted to, but I'm going to hit in the bottom with my cover stitch, and I'm also going to top stitch all of the cuffs down. So, let's flip this just so you can see what it looks like here. So, I'm going to make sure. I just feel like the cuffs lay a lot better when they're top stitched, and the neck band lays a lot better when it's top stitched. You can absolutely top stitch on a sewing machine. You don't have to have a cover stitch to do this. Um, I, I used my sewing machine for the longest and I just recently got a cover stitch so I'm all for using it. That's what it looks like not top stitched. Um, the cuffs see there and then the bottom I'm going to hem with my cover stitch. Again if you don't have a cover stitch you can use a sewing machine. Um, just do it, use a zigzag stitch, a shortened zigzag stitch. Alright so let's go over to the co cover stitch to finish this up. Okay so here we are at the cover stitch. I'm going to flip this um, back right side out because it's, I, I like to do the bottom hem like this. Okay. And if you're using a cover stitch, um, it's a little tricky because you do have to like, it's kind of like a blind hem almost, because you can't really see how much you fold it. And so you're gonna fold it about a half an inch underneath here. 
and then put it underneath here. And then again, the same, same concept, I like to go ahead and make sure I go a little bit before I start wiggling my fabric here. Okay, and so the, the key to getting a cute and good looking curved hem is you're gonna have to kind of pull the fabric up, kind of roll it up, if you can kind of see what I'm doing. Cause like when you when you just pull it, that that's not correct. You're not wanting it to look like that. So you wanna kind of roll it up to be even all the way around as you go. See how I kind of pulled the fabric up? It does require a little bit of manipulation and a little bit of stretching. And so I just keep kind of rolling it up to match. And then always just double check to make sure that you're catching it in there. And again, I am nowhere near uh, perfect, perfect or perfected the cover stitch. Um, I get better every day. <laughs> it's practice. It's a touchy tool for sure. Um, but I just kind of keep going and manipulate the fabric. And then keep on going. Keep manipulating. Like I said, it does require you to just pay attention to where you're going. And then you'll just double check to make sure you're catching it. And that's a pretty good seam, actually. <laughs> when it works perfectly on camera. Okay. It's like the heavens align. And then I do go ahead and it's just simpler for me. Um, I cut the back piece. You'll have one piece in the back, two pieces in the front. And I go ahead and cut those off because it's easier for me to, um, what is that called? Overlap. And then I'll just overlap where I started very carefully. Again, that is something that I have not perfected. And then I go ahead and grab these strings here. And then I'll push the tension release discs, lift my presser foot. I put some snippers or something. You can use a crochet, crochet hook. Lord, I couldn't even say that word. I'm going to be very gentle pulling this out. Of course, it's not wanting to work while it's on camera. Some, it's always something. All right, and then gently pull those out from underneath the presser foot. Snip them here. Then your looper tension disc, pull it, and then as you pull, you're going to cut. And then all three strings should be in the back, and they should have knotted themselves. And then you have it hemmed like this. It's hemmed. The shirt is hemmed. It is hemmed. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to top stitch just as an optional step. doesn't have to be done. Um, and I'm going to do it in the round like this. little guy is done so let's go check it out all right so here is the finished product super cute super oversized cute little dome and tee and as you can see the sleeves are pretty normal in um, length since we folded that cut that cuff but stay tuned next week to see the pants that we pair with this and I hope you enjoyed this video hope it was super simple for you and my daughter is singing Frozen. <laughs> um, but make sure you subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. And we put out a new video every Tuesday. Like I said, next Tuesday we are doing the pants to pair with this outfit with the same fabric. So make sure you tune into that. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when that video is released. So you never miss a video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye.